Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and this is Istanbul in Turkey. Its older name, of course, was Constantinople. And this is what's called the Grand Bazaar. It's where you can buy basically anything, and I've heard that up to 200,000 people visit this site each and every day. You have to go through a metal detector, as you can tell. So here we are in the Grand Bazaar. Now, what does this have to do with megalithic sites? Well, that will be later on in the video. I just wanted to give you a sense and feel uh, what uh, uh, Istanbul is like. We were there in September 2019 for about 12 days. And then trying to get out of the Grand Bazaar was a bit of a challenge, but made it. After that, looking at the cobs of corn there, we were at the Bosporus, which is the seawater area that is in between or connects the European side of Istanbul with the Asian side. And as you can see, there's incredible boat traffic that goes on, as well as ground transportation. Then on our way to the Hagia Sophia and Blue Mosque, we passed by this obelisk, which is from Karnak in Egypt. And then it was on to the Blue Mosque, which happened to be closed that day, but we did go into the Hagia Sophia. And as you can see, Turkey is world famous for its incredible inlays and mosaics. And then this is outside of the Hagia Sophia. Curiously, on the outside, we found a number of these giant gray granite columns, and they were so smooth that they appear to have been turned on ancient lathes, much as like we find at Baalbek in Lebanon. And then also the presence of this purple stone, which is called Imperial Porphyry, and it's only found in the eastern desert of Egypt. Incredibly smooth surface. So here you see the hole at one end, where the ancient lathe would have attached to this rather massive column. One piece, approximately 20 feet or 6 meters long. And there were a number of them. And now we are inside the Hagia Sophia. At, at the time when it was built, it was supposedly the largest church in the world, and then it became a mosque, and more recently it has become a museum. And this is the central dome. You can see all of the inlaid um, fresco mosaic patterns. Some of it from the Christian period, some of it from the Islamic period. And also the presence of more of these huge one-piece pillars that are very curious because during the Greco-Roman time period, most of the pillars were made of many pieces of stone, not single ones. So it's my theory that these were actually brought from ancient Egypt and are pre-dynastic, that they were made utilizing forms of lost ancient high technology, uh, the same as the construction of the Great Pyramid system, as well as the Serapium boxes in the underground tunnels of Saqqara. You can see the strange, strange scarring of the surfaces there. And now we're going to go to the second level in order to be able to look down into the main interior part of the Hagia Sophia. So up and up we go. You can see relatively crude construction techniques, but relatively typical of uh, the Roman, Greek, and later time periods. And now we're going to be going inside. Once again, beautiful inlay in the ceilings. Unfortunately, quite a bit of it seems to be peeling off. Why they are not doing repairs, I don't understand. The scaffolding is not 
there to fix the uh, the mosaics, but uh, I think the basic con interior construction of the structure. After that, we went underground. And this is called the Basilica Cistern. If you want to read the whole thing, please pause the video. Uh, it's a massive underground system, I believe, made during Roman times and could uh, hold an incredible amount of fresh water for utilization in ancient Constantinople. So this is us walking through the labyrinth system of the cistern. And one thing that caught my eye was what's called the crying column. Again, hit pause if you want to read the whole thing. It's the only column inside that has this very interesting uh, all-seeing eye looking uh, shapes carved into the single piece of, uh, of column. It took us about an hour to walk through there. Then it was to the Istanbul uh, National Archaeology Museum, where supposedly they have a million artifacts, which is quite incredible. Quite a lot of work from the Hittite time period, as you can see here. And then these large, I believe, limestone or marble sarcophagi from the Greek time period. But what was most curious are these giant containers, which supposedly were used as sarcophagi. This is, the stone is called Imperial Porphyry and is seven out of 10 in terms of hardness. And again, is only found, as far as I can tell, in the Eastern desert of Egypt. So I don't believe that uh, these were quarried by the Greeks or the Romans. I think they actually found these in ancient Egypt and then later did the embellishing and detail carving of the exterior. Also curious are these char marks that you can see where the lid and the box intersect as if there was an internal explosion in them, which is exactly what we see in places like the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, where there are large uh, granite boxes that show the same effect. What kind of internal explosion? We're still trying to figure that out. But these were, from a megalithic standpoint, the most fascinating aspect of visiting Istanbul on this particular day.